In this tutorial, we will be walking you step by step through our Zoom integration with BuddyBoss. With the Zoom integration, you'll be able to use Gutenberg blocks to create and display Zoom meeting details for your users to join a meeting or watch the recordings from your site. We also have integrated Zoom into our social groups, allowing your group organizers to configure their account and display upcoming and previous Zoom meetings from within the group. This will be covered in a separate video. Now, let's begin setting up Zoom from the WordPress admin dashboard. You can see I've already activated BuddyBoss Platform Pro here. Please note that BuddyBoss Platform Pro is included in every BuddyBoss theme purchase and is available to download from your BuddyBoss dashboard. You just download BuddyBoss Platform Pro from your account area, then go into Plugins, Add New, then Upload and Activate it here. And make sure you enter the license key under BuddyBoss License Keys. After doing that, you can go into BuddyBoss Integrations and you'll see a new tab added called Zoom. You will notice these forms down here. These forms allow us to connect your Zoom account with this website. And once authenticated, that allows us to create meetings here that will get synced back into your Zoom account. And it also allows us to retrieve things like recordings and other meeting data. So I'm assuming you already have a Zoom account. If not, you should go ahead and sign up right now. Note that which plan you have does affect the features that exist on the site based on the limitations of Zoom itself. So if you have a free account, you cannot have cloud recording. You can let users record the meetings on their own computer, but you cannot have them stored in the cloud, which means they will not display on our website because the API will only provide us with recordings that are stored in the cloud. So you need a pro account for that feature. Another important note is that the free account only provides for one host. So basically on your account, you are going to be the host for all of these Zoom meetings. If you want to have alternate hosts or secondary hosts that can also start the meetings, then you also need a pro account. And then if you get the business account, you get a couple of extra features like cloud recording transcripts that we can pull from the API and some little things like that. For most of you, you'll probably want a pro account. Some of you might want business. After logging in on your Zoom account, click Solutions then Marketplace. Under the Develop drop-down menu, select Build App. Here, let's click Create under Server to Server, OAuth. Give your app a name, then click Create. Before we copy these credentials to our WordPress site, make sure that your app is activated first. To do that, let's go to the Information tab and fill out these forms. Next, we need to add the appropriate account permissions from the Scopes tab. Click Add Scopes and add the following permissions under each scope type. Meeting. View all user meetings. View and manage all user meetings. Webinar. View all user webinars. View and manage all user webinars. Recording. View all user recordings. User. View all user information. View users information and manage users. Report. View report data. At this point, you should see that you have eight scopes added. Once all these have been enabled, click done and then continue to the last step. With all the previous steps completed, your app should now be ready for activation. Go to the activation tab and click activate your app. You should see a message that says your app is activated on the account. At this point, we are now ready to head to the final task of the setup. Now we can go back to the App Credentials tab so we can actually paste these credentials into our WordPress site. So we're going to grab our Account ID, Client ID, and Client Secret Key. And select the Zoom account email on the dropdown. For the secret token, navigate to the Feature tab. Let's copy this as well and paste it here. 
Once everything is filled out, click Save Settings. It should now say connected under the Zoom Gutenberg block section, which means the connection is successful and we can now create a Zoom meeting using Gutenberg blocks. The next thing that we need to set up is the Zoom in browser meetings. Here, you need to create a meeting SDK app in your Zoom account and connect the credentials below. With this, we can require members to attend your Zoom meetings and webinars directly on your site. We are back on our Zoom App Marketplace account. On the Develop drop-down, click Build. On this page, click Create under Meeting SDK. Enter a name, then click Create again. On the App page, click on the App Credentials tab to get your needed credentials to set up your Zoom in browser meeting. Let's paste these credentials back to your Buddy Boss site as well. Then select to enable this for meetings and webinars. Then click on Save Changes. If the credentials are correct, it should say connected with a green indicator on top. The last section is for the Zoom settings on our site. Here, you can enable Zoom meetings not just on your site, but on social groups as well. This will allow group organizers to connect their Zoom account to their groups in order to create and synchronize meetings and webinars within the groups. We have a separate tutorial on how to set up Zoom on social groups, so make sure to watch that video right after this one. In this section, you can enable the option to display Zoom recordings for past meetings. This allows Zoom to display recordings of past meetings on your site. So whether you check this option or not, your Zoom meetings can still be recorded and those recordings will be available in your Zoom account. This is just toggling on and off whether or not those recordings will be available to your members within the website to download and view on the website. Also, we have the option to display buttons to download recordings and to copy the link to the recordings. Some of you might have some private content in those recordings that you don't want people to easily access. So that's why we give you the option. And note that within groups, the Zoom tab respects the group privacy. So if it's a private or hidden group, the only people who can access those recordings would be the members of the group. After configuring this section, don't forget to click Save Changes. All right, so now we're going to create some Gutenberg blocks. I'm gonna to go to Pages, Add New, and I'm just gonna create a page that will display my Gutenberg block. Keep in mind this is supported anywhere in WordPress that you can use Gutenberg blocks. So, on regular WordPress pages, you could add it into a Learn Dash course or Learn Dash lesson, anywhere where you have Gutenberg blocks. We're going to select a block from here. You'll see a new area, Buddy Boss, and you can add our Zoom meeting block. Then, here, we have two options. We can either create a brand new meeting, which will sync it up to Zoom, or we can add an existing meeting from our Zoom account. So for now, let's create a meeting. And then we need to give the meeting a title. This is the actual title of the meeting that will be shared with other users and synced into Zoom. Let's pick a date and time for the meeting. And then for the recording, we can set it as cloud or local. Again, you can only use cloud recording if you have a paid Zoom account. So for now, I'll say no recording and let's select save meeting. All right, the meeting has been updated. On the right side panel, we have some info here you might wanna add. You could add a description or optionally enter a password for the meeting. We want to set the duration for the meeting, so I'll say 60 minutes. And then the default host, again, this is your Zoom account email that we entered earlier in the API settings. So whichever user in your Zoom account is mapped to the email is going to be the default host on all these Gutenberg blocks. So in this case, that's me. And then we have some of these other options, start video, require registration, stuff that you would see when you're creating a Zoom meeting from the back end. You can also set this to be a recurring meeting if you want. All right, so I'm going to click save meeting. 
This notice came from Zoom, telling me the password does not follow the rules. I can have a maximum of 10 characters, so let's remove some of these characters and try that again. Okay, the page is updated, let's view our block. So we can see here that we have a little over two hours remaining until the meeting starts. We felt it was really important to display a countdown timer in the block because you potentially have people from all around the world who are trying to join this meeting at the exact same time. It is useful to see the time zone, but seeing the exact countdown to the meeting time is even better. And then we can click meeting details and we see all the info for the meeting, the duration, I can view the password that we entered and I can view the invitation, copy the meeting invite and that's copied to my clipboard if I want to email this to somebody or put it in my calendar or something like that. Then we have the Zoom meeting link which I can click to actually go into the meeting. Then as soon as there are less than 10 minutes remaining before the meeting starts, this will be replaced with a join meeting button. So let me go ahead and show you that. We're going to change the time for this meeting. Let's refresh. And now we get this button to join the meeting for about 10 minutes prior to the meeting and through the entire duration of the meeting. This button's here and I can click that and it will take me into Zoom. And from here, I can open up my Zoom app and participate in the meeting. And then here, I want to show you what a past meeting looks like when it has recordings. So if I click on show recordings, I get this pop-up and it shows me all the recordings for that meeting. So a meeting could have multiple different types of recordings depending on the Zoom options that you've configured. This particular Zoom account allows for a video recording, audio recording and a chat file. I can click on video recording and I can play the video. I can click on audio recording and play the audio clip. I can download that recording. I can also download the chat transcript from the sidebar chat during the Zoom call and I can copy this link and share that. That's the link to where Zoom hosts that recording. All right, so now I want to show you what it's like adding an existing meeting into a Gutenberg block. So here I can see I have an existing meeting in my Zoom account. It's actually the one that we created. So let's go ahead and remove this block and we'll come back and add a Zoom meeting. I'll click add existing meeting and enter the meeting ID without spaces. So I'm going to grab the meeting ID and paste it here. Make sure there are no spaces and save that. And then when we view the page, sure enough, the same meeting shows up and that works. So you can actually take any meeting that you've already created in Zoom in the past and add that in here. I want to show you that we also have a short code. I can do zoom underscore meeting ID equals and then paste the ID again without spaces. Close the quote, close the bracket and update. And if we view the page, that will also display our meeting. And that's how you set up the Zoom integration of the BuddyBoss Platform Pro. As you can see, this integration is very powerful and very practical, and I think it's going to bring the people in your community a lot closer together. This integration is great for site owners, but can be very beneficial for group organizers in social groups. If you're using social groups, make sure you check out our second video where we go through the social group setup.